Great. Okay. So uh, it seems like we are now live, so we will get started. Um, thank you, everyone, for joining us once again on Zoom. And uh, I think the first thing that we will do is approve the minutes from last month, February 22nd. Uh, Rosemary took the minutes. They've been extensively distributed and revised, but I think we've got something everybody is pretty comfortable with. So uh, all I'm going to make a motion to approve the minutes. Do I have a second? Charlie, second. thank you. Uh, all in favor? Just say aye. 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 Okay, great. Anybody opposed? Terrific. Okay, the minutes are approved. And we will go to our first case, which, which is uh, Okamura on Hancock Place. Do we have somebody who is appearing on that? Yes, we do. Super. Good evening. Hello. Hi, I'm Christina Griffin, the architect, and I'm I'm here to ask uh, for a variance for a uh, adding an emergency generator uh, to the property at Two Hancock Place. I'm going to share the screen so I can go through the drawings with you. Great, thank you. Well, the, the cover sheet is just showing the entire house. Um, we are in the process of completing the renovation of this house and the addition on the front. And today I'm, I'm coming to you to request a variance so that we can add an emergency generator. I'm gonna blow this up for you. Uh, <clears throat> Our plan is to add this, um, unit on the, right here at the corner of the house on the back of the house, but towards the corner. Uh, it needs to have a certain distance from the house, but it does meet the setback, um, the rear yard setback. It's outside of the aqueduct buffer, but we need a variance because we are adding 11 square feet to the uh, coverage calculations. And over here on the right um, <clears throat> is our table of zoning data and um, existing. Uh, our total coverage is 13.25%. Uh, and it is, uh, which is 3,907 square feet, which is a non-conforming coverage. Uh, and our proposed coverage is 5, 11 square feet more, 3,918 square feet, which is 13.29%, 0.04% increase. Uh, <clears throat> this emergency generator will be fueled by an underground propane tank, so it's that's not visible. Um, I want to show you uh, the drawings we have. This is the unit that is uh, approximately two feet by four feet on a, on a concrete pad. Uh, and we also have some, uh, have elevations to show you what it would look like uh, against the building. Um, just a second, okay. On the north side of the house, um, we are showing that emergency generator here. It's required to be six feet from the house. So we are showing it here on the north elevation, um, surrounded by shrubbery. Um, and we are down below is our rear or east elevation. And you can see the emergency generator right here uh, in front of the corner of the house facing the backyard. Uh, our plans are on the left, just a blow up to show that uh, the generator is off the corner of the house, six feet 
And you see the shape on the left is really just the underground uh, propane tank that will be fueling the emergency generator and also a barbecue. Uh, on our next page, we're showing photographs on the left is the uh, north uh, east corner of the house. And we have over, we have showing the profile of the proposed generator right here. Which will be surrounded by shrubbery. And then over on the right, we have another view of that corner. Uh, which is showing the emergency generator right here. Um, and that is the extent of my presentation. I also have the emergency generator specifications. I don't know if you need to see that. Um, do I, mean, have I, I don't, my, I guess one of my questions is, I think this is the second or third time you've been before us fairly recently, at least this application has been before us. And I'm wondering why this wasn't part of the original application. I, I think that, um, I think we were only in front of the zoning board once when we went because we had to, the, the house even before we started had non-conforming coverage and then we took away a lot of impervious coverage so we would end up with the same as before, but we we had to rearrange. But uh, I don't think we've been to the zoning board again since until now. And it's unfortunately, uh, we started discussing the emergency generator last summer and it was after we got our approvals and our building permit and it just wasn't a consideration of course now this is a very important feature for homes and uh, unfortunately we did not take that into consideration when we were planning the house. Uh, this is Judd. Was this the property where there was a garage that was con converted? Yeah. Yes. To like a living room. And then there was a new garage that was put to the front of the house and the driveway shifted from where the aqueduct was to the front of the house. Yes. Okay. So I think I, I, I recall that, um, that this property was uh, for the zoning because there was an aqueduct buffer. So we were, we were making, uh, you know, uh, changes um, for build, building within 30 feet. Because I, I remember saying that it's, I'm okay with it as long as soundproofing was put into that room. Soundproofing like insulation, just to make sure that any noise in there wouldn't kind of travel to the aqueduct. Correct, yeah, I remember that, yeah. Yes, I, I think, yeah, I, I, of course I forgot about that. We also discussed this rear wall of the old garage, which is now the family room, and how we would handle that because it is in the aqueduct buffer. So I do think that was part of that submission. Uh, does anybody else have any questions? Well, uh, this is uh, Rosemary. Um, I guess, so the, the answer to the, the previous question, why this wasn't part of the original application is it just wasn't, hadn't, hadn't come up? Unfortunately, it did not. Unfortunately, um, we did not, we were, I think, so focused on solving the, the challenging problem of trying to reorganize a house so we could create a backyard and, and still create that, uh, green space and park-like feeling uh, next to the aqueduct. So I, I don't, I think we just missed it. And I, it became uh, important, of course, um, as we were working in, on the construction site and then eventually uh, we decided we would uh, need to come to you because it is, even though it's very small, um, it's of course an increase in the coverage. Anybody else have any comments or questions? Um, and is there, Sarah Palermo, is there anybody who wants to be heard on this from the public? Um, nobody's raising their hand to speak and there are no comments in the chat. Okay, terrific. Um, okay, you know, I, I guess the reason that I brought up 
why hasn't this come up before is because we do not like to do things piecemeal. We really like when people come to us that they bring everything that they're going to do because it, it sometimes ends up being death by a thousand cuts if you keep coming back and coming back. Um, but as you did note, this is 11 square feet. It makes very little difference in the percentage um, of coverage. And so given the fact that it is something right, increasingly people are wanting to do, uh, given some of the power outages we've had, um, I am willing to make a motion to approve. Do I have a second? I'll second, Judd. Terrific, thanks, Judd. Okay, so from uh, top to bottom on my screen, Charlie. I vote yes. Rosie? Yes. Judd? Yes. John? John Dimling? Oh, he's muted. Oh, there we go. No. He's still muted. Yeah, you're still muted, John. You want to? Yeah, can there you, you go. Yes, now we can I, hear you. Yes. I, I'm sorry. I, <clears throat> I'm a neighbor, so I don't vote on this. Okay, sorry. You were noticed on this. Okay, so you are approved, and uh, I will send you a letter later this week to that effect. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, good evening. You too. Okay, what about uh, Willingham is our next case, 20 Elm Park. Do we have somebody on that? Yes, we do. Terrific. Good evening, uh, board members, Chairperson Gardner. Um, I just want to make sure the whole team is on before we start moving forward. So if you could just give me one second to confirm. Um, and I'm assuming you guys can hear me, right? I, I, I'm, I'm good here? Yep. Okay, great. Um, so I think everyone is on. I don't know if Chris from lunch is on. Um, but I'll, I'll, Sorry, I'll, he didn't raise his hand to speak. Hold on. Oh, apologies. Sarah. If you can uh, bring him in or if I can do that somehow, I don't know. Um, but anyway, okay, Chris Munch is on. Thank you. Thank you for the patience. So um, my name is George Alessandrados. I am from Keenan Bean. I'm an associate at Keenan Bean. We represent um, Tom Willingham. He's the applicant in this, uh, this, this project. House is located at 20 Elm Park. It's in the 2F district. It's a one family house. Um, it's actually, I, 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 in our prior meetings with boards, um, 20 Elm Park is sort of, people don't really know where it is. So just for context, it's off Main Street. If you make a left on South Deerman, you go all the way down South Deerman, and then you go a little further down and, and 20 Elm Park is right there. And, and we'll have a in, in our presentation tonight, we'll be able to, to, to have an aerial that'll show you more context for that. But, you know, pursuant to conversations we've had with the planning board, we've been before them twice. Um, our applicant, uh, Tom Willingham, um, he intends to age in place in the house with he, he and his wife intend to age in place. So there are certain variances we need. Um, we need, as, as stated on the agenda, we need FAR, we need coverage, we need the uh, rear yard setback and the Croton Aqueduct buffer which in this case, I guess, uh, because of the way the house is situated, they're sort of one in the same. It's the same distance as the 30 feet, and it's from the same side of the property. It's the Western side of the property. And there's also a side yard variance that, that we are prepared to discuss. Um, so oh, with me tonight, I forgot to introduce my team. I'm sorry. I have Mark Schulman and Nick Marks from Design Development. They are the architects on the project. And I have Chris Munch from Gray Book Inc. He is the project manager and the owner's representative on the project. So, so we're all here and um, we're gonna seek approval for these variances. So without further ado, I think we can begin our presentation. I will, um, Nick is sharing his screen, great. So the way, and, and you know, if you guys want it done in any other way, you know, feel free, we, we will make it as easy as possible for you. But, I will start discussing the coverage on the FAR uh, variances. 
And then Mark Shulman, he'll be able to go more into the rear yard setback, the Croton Aqueduct, and the side yard buffer. So with that being said, if you guys are good to go, we're good to go. Great. Yep. Go ahead. All right. So this is a rendering of the property. This is 20 Elm Park. It's a, it's a very nice house. It's really nestled in the corner there. But there are some, some variances that we need to, to move forward with this project. With our hearings with the um, planning board, we have taken the necessary you know, mitigation measures, I guess you can call them, to, to make as few variances as possible and as you know, minimal increases as possible. But we, we are brought today for, for these variances. So um, Nick, if you can go to the next slide. So this is the aerial map of the surrounding property. Um, the property is the property number one right there. It's 20 Elm Park. It's actually two parcels. Um, one property, but as you see, Main Street is up there where it says 139876. As you guys know, South Dearman is right where that number 11 is circled. And then just a little further, you have 20 Elm Park. So this aerial view here, it takes into account the surrounding properties. I actually got the notice. It's the affected neighbors by the term of the, um, by, by the code within 200 feet. And we added in those two properties on the corner there um, in terms of the, the square. So Nick, if you can go to the next slide. So this is a table that compares coverage and FAR for the proposed work at 20 Elm Park and then the surrounding existing coverage and FAR to the best of our ability, obviously, for the surrounding neighborhoods. And we, we, we came with this um, table before the planning board and they, uh, and Ed Marin, the building inspector there, he, he said, the calculations, the method to the madness was, 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 was legitimate. So just so I can give you some context on how we came up with this, we use Greenberg GIS. And I looked at the property cards and on the property cards, I don't know if you're familiar with them, um, but they have on the second page, they have a dwelling computations. That's a total living area. That's the FAR. That, that's, you know, it's essentially what FAR is. For coverage, they also have a plot sketched on each property card. So we took the cub, we took what that was, and then we, we added 25% to account for um, walks, retaining walls, miscellaneous hardscapes. That's at one of the um, asterisks be below the uh, table here. Um, so now in the, the first row up top there, we have the existing uh, 20 Elm Park, and then the second one is proposed. So we're looking at a coverage and FAR, coincidentally, same number, 157% of the allowed. And obviously the formulas for the FAR and the coverage, they came from the, the, the village code. And, and you know those were all calculated based on that. So based on these surrounding properties and the key on the left, those numbers um, correspond to the map that we saw on the previous slide, the aerial. Um, so if you have any questions, we could flip back and forth, but basically, the shaded cells represent amounts in excess of 100%, which there are quite a few, and, and that has, you know, that it plays a role of what kind of property we're looking at and what, what the lot size is and all that. But I think more importantly, um, out of the, these properties, 21 properties are over 100% of the allowable coverage. And of those 21, 16 are over 157%. 157% being the percentage that 20 Elm Park would be over with whatever additions and, and, and you know, changes are made there. Um, 22 properties are over 100% are over 100% of the allowable FAR. Of those 22 properties, 15 are over the 157%. So while 157% sounds like a substantial number, um, one, some of these other numbers are much more substantial. Um, for comparison's sake, but also it's it's not just one or two more properties. It's actually a, a significant majority of the other properties have, you know, greater FAR, greater coverage. And I understand it's not, it might not necessarily be perfect to the T in terms of, you know, because we were using the property cards, but this is a general, you know, comparison to the surrounding neighborhood to, um, to, to see where we stand with coverage and FAR. Now, of no our properties number four and property number 11, those are the uh, neighbors to the north and to the east of the property. They have been, you know, they, they've seen these plans, they've seen everything um, that, that Tom wants to do. And um, 
they are on board with the changes. They 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 have no no objections to any of these changes. No no issues with anything. So the neighbors that are directly affected as well, um, they they are they are on board and, and good to go. Um, George, can I ask you a question while we're on this page? Yes. So I am reading this correctly that this is the biggest house of all these houses. This is the biggest house in terms of existing coverage and existing FAR. Yes. Um, it it looks that way. Yes. Okay. I just want to make sure I'm reading it correctly. But but that is if you you know it takes into account too that there are you know it's two two parcels and and also some of the other houses. It's along Main Street, so some of them are a little you know tight there. But yes, that's that that looks like it's a fair you know other than obviously the apartment complex. <laughs> right. Um, yep. But that's coverage in FAR, and I'll hand it off now to uh, Mark Shulman, and he can he can get into the the other um, setbacks and Croton Aqueduct and, and that stuff. Thank you, George. Uh, Nick, if you will, the next slide, please. So here is an architectural uh, here is an architectural site plan, and um, essentially, uh, and I'll have Nick uh, point these out. So just to, again to put this in context. Um, so you see the, the, the property boundary, the existing house sits over on the, uh, so north is straight up uh, and uh, west to the left. So you see the existing house for the most part sits uh, within the setback and within the Croton Aqueduct buffer. Um, and what we are proposing are the areas that are shaded. So what we have right now, uh, and I'll, I'll, so there's a, a uh, at the top of the page is a single level uh, master bedroom suite um, uh, located there. You will notice there's a very tiny sliver of space there that actually sits to the left of the property line within that side yard setback. Um, and then as you go down to the left-hand corner, there are a few things going on down here that I want to explain to you. Uh, the first, what you see dashed in red, there is an existing stair and retaining walls that uh, provide access from that backyard, uh, it's a lawn area, uh, down into the basement level. And right now the proposal is to remove the retaining walls and the stair, and we're introducing a new stair that goes down to the lower level. Um, we needed to do that to resolve some issues related to uh, stormwater and flooding. So um, that's where we're going with that. The, the hatched area just above that represents a, essentially it's a door out from the kitchen onto a landing, six steps down onto the lawn. So that just gives access down to the lawn area from the kitchen area or the main living area. And then um, what's not hatched but just to the right of that is an enclosed, we're actually enclosing, thank you, Nick. So in that red uh, rectangle, we are enclosing uh, what is currently a porch, uh, two-story porch with, uh, we're, we're enclosing that to reconfigure an interior staircase up to the second floor. So there's no coverage increase there. It's the only floor area, but, uh, it does sit within the 30 foot setback and the aqueduct buffer, but it sits within the existing footprint of the current, uh, of those current uh, balconies. So in essence, there is no change in coverage. So all said, there's actually a reduction in coverage uh, because, of, because we're taking out that existing stair and retaining walls and simply introducing uh, a new compact stair to the lower level. And again, that the uh, the landing and the stair down to the, the grass area. So those that those the, those are the within that lower left hand corner. Those are all of the items that that uh, require the setback requirements. I want to also show you, um, uh, and Nick, if you can to go to the next slide. In that area, so this helps put also put this in context. So the section. So what you see to the left, uh, we've identified uh, in section, essentially this is a section elevation. We've put a person there at the center of the aqueduct and you can see there's a slight rise or uh, grade change up to that rear uh, property liner. Uh, and then there's a seven foot high wall. So if you look at the diagram at the bottom, 
anybody walking along that aqueduct can't see into the rear yard anyway. That's an existing condition. So you literally look over, uh, you, you look over the, obviously the stair that goes to the basement, you can't see at all. You can't see the uh, small landing and stair that goes down to the backyard or the, the door, just the, just the very top left portion of that door jam you might be able to see from down there. Uh, you will be able to see though the modified or the extended footprint for the stair enclosure, which used to be the two-story porch. So that in essence is the extent of the, uh, uh, the variances we're uh, requesting in that back buffer. Um, and then the last one uh, is a uh, rear and side yard buffer. Nick, if you can go to the next slide, please. So in the upper left-hand corner, there is a proposed generator uh, right there off of the, the, uh, the back corner of the house that also sits within, uh, within the buffer and within the setback. Um, and also, Nick, if you can just have pan down a little bit so we can see the note, please. Thank you. So you see that, so there's a dash line that represents the propane tank, which will be buried. And uh, essentially that, uh, that generator is blocked by the same seven foot high wall. There's some landscaping back there and the housing. Um, and then there is landscape screening around it so that you, you can't really, you, you will not be able to see that from any of the adjacent neighbors. So it's pretty well buffered uh, from everyone around. And um, that essentially, uh, you know, that, that that's, sums that's up the, in the aqueduct buffer. It also sits within the aqueduct buffer. It's that is correct. So in the side yard setback or rear it is, yard uh, Yes. Or Nick, if you can, can you just show a red line where the, uh, the buffer and rear yard setback line is and the side yard setback, please? So gotcha. that line there at the top is the side yard set, uh, setback. And that line vertically up and down is essentially the uh, aqueduct buffer and the rear yard setback. Okay. So it's tucked away in the corner. And as, as George mentioned, um, this whole proposal really impacts only two residents, the one straight up the page and the one to the far right. And both have seen the plans and both have, uh, have actually uh, documented and are in favor of uh, the proposed project. Why does the generator have to be there? That I, I do not love the generator being in the buffer. Or so, the to be honest with you. Yeah. So so the reason the reason it's there is that the electricity comes in off that corner and it was the it was the it's the shortest run from the electrical service uh, connection. That's the primary. And there's also a couple of uh just see a couple of existing AC units. So there are condensing units right there, uh, and, and there's mechanical space in the basement. So it's all within close proximity to uh, the mechanical space within, you know, within the residential, uh, you know, within the basement area. That's the primary reason for its location. Is there anywhere else you can put that? May I speak there, to that? Uh, please. Oh, sorry. My name is Chris. How are you? Um, I don't think Nick has. Um, the picture, but that actually is at basement level. So the grade that comes around that circle where the two AC condensers are is actually a, it's, it's, it's walkout basement level. It's tucked into the bottom corner and it keeps it as the lowest point on the property. We put it there for the mechanical reasons, but also to keep it well hidden and low. We're going to be putting in a Generac probably a 22 kW, which has got the lowest decibel rating. And we're trying to keep it as low and as quiet as possible. Out of view, the property, if you move it anywhere else along the property it becomes in view of someone. So we tried to bury it in to keep it in as low as we can. You can't tell from this map, but there's a couple of photographs that we did as we were placing this to figure out where is the best place to put it, to keep it as, you know, as close to the ground as possible, to keep it as quiet as we can and buffer it in. And uh, that's how much will be visible from there, from the aqueduct? Zero. There's a, there, along the entire, hey Nick, do you have that picture? But along the entire back of the property that faces the right aqueduct now. is a wall. Let me see if Nick can track down that, uh, a back picture. Um, an actual photograph of the aqueduct. It probably is in his library, but the whole back of this property 
along the aqueduct has a seven foot concrete wall that's been there forever, going from one end to the other. It has a, I don't know if you've walked the aqueduct, it has a red gate, a red door that brings you in. Uh, this is Judd. So at the south end of the property where you were talking about, you know, converting the, uh, the, the, the porch to the stairwell, mm -hmm. um, what's, what's the elevation there versus uh, of the ground versus the north end where the, where the generator, because you said that the generator was going to be at sort of at a sub level, just to get right. an idea of, of el elevation. Okay, of so power. from this picture... If you see that ivy covered wall mm -hmm. and that tree, the generator would be at the base of that tree on the opposite side of that wall by, I don't know, eight, eight or seven or eight feet in. And the best thing to be would be to show where the opposite side is to show the rendering for the closing. So do you see this potential picture? That would be the tree from the other side of the wall. That's the basement door. The generator would sit by where that cream colored pot is right there. I got you. So at the south at the south end of the property, you don't you can stay on that picture, okay. but on the south end of the property, uh, the elevation would be sort of above that basement door, right? Correct. Okay. That is I understand. Correct. Sorry, yeah, this, Mark, this, this line, this line here is a kind of an indicator of generally where the uh, first floor, finished first floor is. So so anything below that line is technically lower than the south side backyard. Okay. Nick, do uh, you have the picture? I'm sorry, ma'am. No, no, that's um, okay. Um, I was just going to say, I think we've talked about every variance now except FAR. Have we fully explored the FAR variance you're looking for? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I, th I think that uh, so uh, in, in the chart that George ha has indicated, that indicated both. Uh, can you just go back to that, the, the chart there, um, page two, please, Nick? Yes. That analysis was both for coverage and FAR. Okay. okay. Yeah. All right. Gotcha. Yeah, I can see. Yep. There you go. Okay. Well, that's, that's a lot of variances. Um, why don't we take them in the way that they were presented? So why don't we start with coverage? Does anybody have any comments on coverage? Yeah, I, well, I have just a question. When you were going over the diagram, talking specifically about the, I guess the, the um, I don't know, stairs that you were enclosing, you made some comment about the, um, the coverage number being reduced? Are you just talking about in that particular area because the overall oh, coverage number yeah. is not being reduced, that, right? That's correct, that, that's an excellent point. Nick, if you can go back to the overall site plan, please. The, that, is, that is a correct statement, exactly. So the, the, the coverage is actually reduced in that far left-hand corner. What, so here's a couple of other things that, that, that increase coverage. Um, so you see up above, um, so uh, a few things. One is that, um, there's the portions of uh, the driveway is also being modified as well, where the two cars are currently shown on plan that area. Um, uh, per planning we've, we've been over this, uh, as George said we've been to planning twice so the area where those cars would be located count towards coverage, so that has now been added to the coverage calculation, the um, we had just also uh, I think it's probably worth mentioning. But the red dashed areas that show removed patio to reduce coverage. So initially, when we came in with our proposal, we had a patio off the, the master bedroom suite at the top. And we had extended um, the patio essentially at that courtyard, that area there. And we have, uh, as a way to, you know, to compromise and mitigate the coverage impact, we reduced the patio back. But, the hatched area of the extension of the first master bedroom extension and the hatched area of the extended courtyard also counted towards that coverage calculation. So while it gets reduced in the lower left hand corner, it gets increased by essentially to sum it up, um, the, the single story uh, addition, an extension of that sort of courtyard surrounded by three walls 
and the area under the park, the two uh, parking spaces. They increase, that's where the increase in coverage comes from. And, and what's the total increase in terms of square footage? I know you gave us a percentage, but. Yeah, it, I just have to go back to that chart. So the existing on coverage, uh, existing is 3996. And the proposed um, is, if I'm reading that correctly, the 4683. Oh, roughly seven seven hundred, right? That quick math, something like that. Sixty Anybody else have any questions or comments about coverage? Well, well, so Sarah, my comment is that the the thesis. I'm having a little cognitive dissonance here, right? The thesis is that we need to make these changes in order for the owners to age in place. So they need to go from 4,000 square feet to 4,700 square feet in order to age in place. I have a hard time believing that. Like I find that not compelling, right? I mean, it's a beautiful design and all of that other good stuff, but I'm totally unconvinced that this is necessary. All right, so, so let, let, me, let me, if you will, um, if I can help uh, support the cause here. So right now, um, it, it's uh, if you go to the, uh, we can take you to the to the floor plan, but essentially right now, um, the way to age in place is is to have essentially all of the living area on the ground floor, and right now the master bedroom is currently located. And Nick, maybe you just go back to the to the rendering if you will, just for a second. But the the current the master bedroom is located on the second floor over the garage. So that is not conducive to uh, aging in place. So the reason for the addition is to put a master bedroom on the ground floor, uh, which essentially is that single story addition you see to the right. Um, that, uh, so that's, that's item number, item, essentially item number one, expanding the, the, that little courtyard area, the patio that you see out there, that outdoor space, that also added to the coverage calculation. It really is it's really a courtyard sort of internal to the three walls of, of the space there. So uh, again, I don't, not really an impact to any of, of the neighbors. And then the, the other point that I'll make is that the current driveway configuration um, is uh, very, um, it, it's very difficult to navigate. And there, there's been quite a, uh, quite a bit of conversation with the planning board about this. So right now, the way it's configured, you come in a narrow driveway, long, narrow uh, driveway with a significant amount of grade change on a curb. You come down and with a single car parked in the driveway in its current configuration, there's no way to articulate around that car. Um, UPS trucks, delivery trucks, an ambulance, emergency vehicles uh, can't come down there and articulate if there is an existing car in the driveway which most of the time there is. Um, so most of, most of uh, most large trucks, moving trucks, any large vehicles who know the property don't go down the driveway. They stay at the top of the driveway and what you can't see, but here, but they end up blocking the, the, the shared driveway to the neighbors left and right. So it's, a pro it's actually a problem, not just for our client, but it's also a problem for our neighbors and they have indicated as much in the letters that that uh, supporting the project. So by expanding the driveway, and by allowing allowing us two things: one, a place to put cars away from where you can articulate. Number one, and second, by putting that hammerhead at the top of the page, allows a vehicle to come in back into the hammerhead and pull back out. Um, so now we can get all of those vehicles down into the driveway. Um, so that, so that the driveway doesn't count towards coverage with the exception of the area under the two park spaces. So in essence, what I would, what I, what I'd, I'd say is the simplest way to say this is that the ground floor master plan is critical, uh, in, uh, aging in place. Um, you know, the, the, the additional coverage for the parking spaces is, um, a result of reconfiguring, uh, uh, a poorly designed driveway. And 
the extended the extended patio area is is uh, um, again really sort of uh, it doesn't impact um, anybody other than other than the homeowner's ability to have some usable outdoor space. So aging in place means I can't go upstairs to the bedroom, but I can still drive. Yes. Okay. Or, or I, I would also tell you so that this house is designed for a caretaker. Uh, it's ADA accessible. Um, all are critical to um, the needs of our client right now. And your client bought the house within the last 14 months, yes? That's correct. Okay, so he knew what he was buying. That is correct. Okay. There is a, and, I, and I'm just going to dance around something very respectful to Tom. There is a, a, an evolving situation with aging in place that warrants, I don't know how to say this correctly. There's a, there is a, an evolution of a situation evolving in his life or their life that will require ADA compliancy in the future. And I'm trying to be as polite and as respectful to Tom's wishes as I can, but it isn't, this isn't a, um, a wish, it's going to become a need. And, and Chris, we, we should also mention that that was discovered one immediately after purchasing that. Right. It, it, he didn't purchase the house knowing this, it was really a, a, a life moment that made this necessary. Are there any other questions or comments on um, the coverage issue? I mean, I guess one of my comments is, uh, I think one of the things I'm struggling with is, um, I'm not sure that the list that you've given us in the beginning is all of those properties are, are apples to apples. It's a, it's a neighborhood that you're comparing it to a lot of houses that are quite a bit smaller on much smaller lots. And so those overage numbers are not, in my mind, all apples to apples. Does anybody else have a, a thought on that? Oh, I agree with that 100%. Yeah. Sir, I, I, Sarah, it's Sean. I had the same thought also. And, and, and I understand that. Nick, if you could go back to that coverage chart for a second. It's page three on this, right? Yeah. So some of them aren't apples to apples, and and we didn't, uh, you know, the the the. If you look the class on the right, it talks about you know some of them are vacant, some of them are apartments and condos. We were looking strictly at the residential, and and some of them are residential, one family or two family year round because they're they're along Main Street, so it's in that B business district. Um, but just because you know, some of them are in the B zoning district doesn't mean it's not necessarily a one or two family house. Um, the, the purpose of this is to show that there's not gonna be a change in the neighborhood. You know, there's not gonna be certainly a substantial change in the neighborhood. Um, it, it's, it's really in, in accord, I guess you could say with, with the character of the neighborhood. You know, some of them aren't gonna be apples to apples. You're absolutely right. Like, Number two is the apartment building complex, but we're, we're take that out and you're still at, you know, the other numbers for other houses that are one but or two family yeah. houses. If you look at four and 11, which are the two you pointed out as direct neighbors, 11's just over a hundred percent. Four is significantly below and you're looking to go to 157. Um, that's a big difference between the two neighboring properties in terms of coverage. Understandable, yes. And, and that, that just happens to be because of, you know, the, the geographic location of this, this property. But again, the, 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 I guess if you look at the existing coverage and the existing FAR, the percent increase isn't as significant as, you know, one might think at quick notice. But again, this was brought on by a, a, a need, as Chris said, we want to be respectful of, of Tom's wishes. This was brought on by a need that was sort of spur of the moment. And we've gone to the planning board several times and Mark, Mark can speak to this too. There have been, you know, we, we've taken mitigation measures to make it as minimal as possible. Um, 
But, you know, when looking at numbers, it's also the substantiality isn't measured strictly based on numbers, too. It's also measured in the context of, of the surrounding neighborhood. And uh, I, 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 yeah, George, if I can, the only other thing that I would say in that, you know, and having done this for, you know, many, many years uh, being before boards, a lot of the issues re related to uh, the zoning and FAR are, are the negative impact on neighbors and what it does to the community. And I think that what should be taken into consideration is the unique nature of this house and the property and the fact that it is very much tucked away and hidden. Most people don't know it exists. Um, we had members of the planning board did not know this house existed. So it's, it's, a, it's a very unusual property um, in the heart of a downtown with a, uh, a bustling main street. So it's what makes it really, um, this it happens to be a very unique situation. And, um, and I think the other thing that, that, that's positive to the, the proposal is that we do have buy-off from the neighbors. So the only, the, really the only two neighbors that this impacts have reviewed this, understand the project, and they uh, have, they're in favor of the project. So if you take that into consideration, this does not impact, really does not impact anyone else uh, from, a, uh, from a zoning coverage, um, F, zoning FAR uh, perspective. Uh, this is uh, Judd. So the, the coverage, the 700 square feet, I mean, that, that's mostly coming from that addition, right, on the north side? That's correct. I mean, are there, are there uh, you know, I mean, I, I, you know, just experiences with people converting, you know, you know I mean, garages into um, a bedroom, a master suite. Are there, right. are there any, has that been thought of, uh, the use of, of the existing first floor for a conversion for a bedroom rather than at making an addition? We have, and, and, and you're right. The, really, the only, other, the only other way to make that work would be to take the garage away. But, but I think you still need to have, you know, you need to have you know, vehicles you know, in a garage. It's, it's the only way that it would work for them. So that, you know, that was not... Uh, um, that was a non-starter as far as our client was concerned was to take his garage away to make that work. So in this neighborhood, you're making a lot of comparisons uh, on coverage and FAR, but most of the, I mean, I don't know what percentage of these properties have garages versus not, but in, in off the main street area, I would say most of them don't have garages. Just a thought. Yeah. Um. And how much are you adding with that patio? Um, and go Nick, do you have a calculation yeah, go to the it? chart that, that separates everything? Yep. The zoning analysis. So the original one was 219 and increased to 378. Uh, so that would be. Yeah, yeah, roughly 160 square feet. Yeah. All right. Are there any other questions or comments about um, coverage? And then I guess while we're at it, why don't we start? Why don't we go to FAR? Uh, any questions? Does anybody have any questions or comments about the FAR? Well, I think all my comments on coverage apply to FAR. FAR, right, yeah, okay. Yep, yep, I hear you. Um, let's go to the buffer and the, the side yard setback, because I have to say that that does bother me. I mean, uh, I don't love the noise that's gonna be generated either from testing or from use of the generators impacting the aqueduct that does, uh, that is a concern for me. Does anybody else have any comment on that? I, Sarah, I agree, Sean, I agree with you. Yeah, I mean, I'm, you know, I mean, I live off the aqueduct. I, I'm concerned about anything that encroaches on the aqueduct, yeah. on the setback, you know, yeah. regardless of whether or not, you know, like I just don't want to set the precedent that it's okay. Right. So, sorry, in, in regard to that, 
if we move the generator from where its current location is to in, to the technically the up the hill out of the aqueduct buffer, would that that would that help mitigate your concerns? Well, so there is not so right. the generator being in the aqueduct buffer is not actually on the list of things that we're considering here. Like the, right. Yeah, I hadn't seen that as well. Right, it's not so like it's kind of it's kind of outside the scope of what we're supposed to be voting on. But that that is it, I, my understanding is that that is in the side yard and rear yard setback. Right, it's not in it's not an aqueduct buffer violation. Well, there is one of the listed things is intrusion into the aqueduct buffer. It isn't doesn't that refer to the generator as well as I think well, there's some very small portion of the other. It's it's for the proposed future generator. It just says variance for encroachment in the rear yard setback, in the side yard setback, and variance exceeds allowable coverage. It doesn't say anything about the mm. aqueduct setback. That that was my reading of it as well. I I'm a little I was. Um... Not expecting to see that. I thought the the aqueduct issue was more the addition encroaching to a very small uh, amount where it connects to the existing home. Right, right. But having said that, um, anytime you need less variances is a good thing for us. So if mm -hmm. you do not have to put that in the aqueduct buffer, um, that would certainly be much more favorable. Tom, I have no issues with slide. I mean, Mark, I have no issues with sliding the generator up. Yeah. It's still going to be in a side yard buffer because to do that, I'd have to put it in the front yard to get it out of the side yard, but we could get it out of the rear yard buffer just by simply sliding it up. Yeah. So, I, so, I, I, so I, had a, I, I had an opinion just on that generator. Mm -hmm where you're currently putting at it is is kind of subterranean right now yeah almost. and and the height from where i believe you're proposing it to the height of that wall is probably greater than seven feet and then Correct. if you move it if you move it um i guess it would be to the east up the hill which would be further away from the aqueduct it might you might be bringing it uphill which then you might be able to hear it from the aqueduct. Be correct. I just uh, that was our intention that. was to put it down in the hole. I, I think that's an accurate analysis. Yeah. Do, do we have any sense of how much noise it will make? On, you know, if you're on the aqueduct, given that you lowered it there, I, I'm not. I know very little about acoustics. Um. From a decibel rating, Generac has the lowest enclosed cabinet. Um, it is basically a running car. So yeah, exercises itself uh, weekly, seven minutes. It's usually a 22 kW. The Generac Guardian series, which is, I believe, what was on the prior application. That's basically the gen set is, a, is the lowest decibel rating generator there is. Um, so that's kind of why everybody uses them, that and parts availability. So if you consider your car running in the driveway, that's about the noise level you'll hear at exercise. It runs at a lower RPM during exercise and a higher RPM during emergency status, which is sort of the counterpart. If the power's out, you're generally in a storm situation. So you're, the noise is, would be probably mitigated by the rain. Um, also, I want to add, Chris, that's a good point that it's about the same noise level as a car. Yeah. Um, the parking lot um, off of Main Street for the old Croton Aqueduct is actually roughly plus or minus at the start of the corner right. of our property line. So you do have cars. Actually, right here, you can see asphalt parking area. So it stops right here. So you actually have cars parked um, within a 10-foot radius of the generator. Um, so if anything, it would be similar to a car that's parked there that's on. Unless it's a Tesla. Unless it's a, yes, correct. <laughs> so, but we are not object to sliding it up the hill, but I agree with you, sir, that it is, it would potentially increase the noise level, but slide it out of the technical variant setback. So here's a more of a procedural question uh, to the group, <laughs> to the board, really. Um, 
I didn't see this noticed as a generator unless I misread it, which is entirely possible. I didn't see this as a generator in the aqueduct buffer. Correct. And I'm not sure we can approve it if it wasn't properly noticed. Am I wrong about that? Well, it just says intrusion into the aqueduct buffer. Yeah, it, it does say, say that. It didn't say what it was. Right. So the notice. The notice is accurate, right? Okay. 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 In the detail, the breakout and the letter from the planning uh, from the planning board breaks it out a little bit more finely about what the specific intrusion or exceptions are. So, I think it's been noticed. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. good. Yeah. Good, good. Good. All right. That makes it a little easier. Um, anybody else have? Is there anybody from uh, the audience, so to speak, who would like to be heard on this? Um, there's nobody raising their hand to speak, and there are no comments in the chat. Okay. Um, what about board members? What did, does anybody have anything they want to contribute in terms of overall impressions of this proposal? Well, you know, I mean, this is an imp when you walk down the aqueduct, which I do every day, right? This is an imposing house on the aqueduct. It's right on the line, right? As is you know, the multifamily housing next to it, right? And making making the coverage on the lot bigger, I think is antithetical to what we really wanna have going on on the aqueduct, right? Which is we want a more of a, a park-like, you know, uh, atmosphere. And, and, it, and you know, there's, there's parts of the aqueduct that are like that and there are parts of the aqueduct that, you know, are dense, they have multifamily housing on them. But, you know, for me, I'm having a hard time thinking that this is a, a net, a good thing. I surely have the same feeling and one thought does occur to me if we grant this variance for these people who are in this in these circumstances and I, I certainly the extent I understand them I empathize with them but they're not going to be there for the rest of the of, of eternity or the next 50 years probably but the variances will be have been have, have, will have been granted yeah um, I have a question. Yes. Sure. So thank you. Um, so what we're talking about right now is intrusion into the aqueduct buffer, right? And I understand and completely agree that we're trying to minimize. Nick, can you br can you bring up this cross section? Yep. So what what? So, so Chris, I just want to be clear. That's not what I was talking about, right? What I was talking about was was far end coverage on a property that is prominently on the aqueduct. I wasn't just talking about intrusion on the aqueduct. Okay, all right, so I, but I, I understand that. So Nick, I'm actually looking for the zoning code analysis chart. So just to break the, the it down a little simpler, because that's the way my, I think it was Brian's chart. Brian's yeah. chart, yes. Yeah, so just to, just to get my head around it with my OCD, what we're actually doing is a single story master bedroom on the upper right, which is about structures went from 224.98 to about 500 and something square feet, an increase in patio, a small deck off the kitchen and stairs down. And the, the basement stairwell, I don't know if anybody's ever gone and peeked in there, but the, the access to the basement occupies the entire backyard. It actually is a set of patio steps that winds around. We're trying to clean that all up and tuck it up against the house into one single staircase, which will now prevent the flooding that he gets concurrently with every storm and increase lawn area, which is what would be the net of that in the backyard. All of that work goes over the other side of that wall, which is essentially invisible to the aqueduct walk because I walked the aqueduct a few times to make sure the only part that will actually show a difference from anybody on the aqueduct path would be where we close in the second story balcony so to speak right here in that bottom section to put um, that's essentially an internal set of stairs that are a little more compliant with walking up and down now to answer a question that came up before Yes, they did buy this house and it had a whole mess of quirky things with it that were all predated. 
would it have been done this way now? Probably not. But when it was done, it was done. And as you go through a chart and start doing the statistical mathematics to the chart, the larger the number, the larger the percentage. So as we start breaking it all down, simply in my brain, and just my view, the increases or the, or the parts we're increasing on are the minimal. Can we make the front patio smaller? Yeah, we can. Can we, can we shorten that coverage in the parking area? Well, the parking area of 200 and 300 square feet worth of variance and coverage becomes a math issue in the code. It, it's because there, there's potentially a potential spot for a car to sit there more than a certain amount of time, according to the planning board, that becomes a parking space, not driveway. So that's how that increased. So as we went through the planning board versions a few times to get to you guys, we went also went through the architecture review board for historical, not really sure what they call it, a historical approval in the, cause it's in the historic sites. And they were, you know, that was a meeting we went through after our first planning board. And they also addressed all the views and all of the work it, coming into the rear yard and the aqueduct buffer. And they passed us on to the next step because in when it boils down on paper, it looks complicated, but it's actually in reality, a little simple. And so this is what, it, when we get into the numbers and you start adding them all up and comparing a 2,800 square foot house with a 4,000 square foot house with a percentage of overage and you start running all these numbers, it gets a little out of sort in my head. I don't know if anybody else sees it that way, but that's how I view it at the moment. Yeah, the only other thing that I would just add is that is that mo most of these coverage issues, NFR issues, really don't impact the aqueduct. Right. Um, they, they're really all addressed on the eastern part of the property. Um, and in fact, we're actually reducing coverage along the aqueduct in that, in that lower left-hand corner of, of the walkway. So um, we're actually mitigating, we're actually, we're actually reducing that where it really counts along the aqueduct buffer. Uh, any other comments from any other board members? No, I, uh, it's Judd and it, it is what it is with the aqueduct with, with when you look at this property, you you really can't see everything that's there on the east side. Of, on the east side, sorry, I just had a, someone just FaceTime me. Apologize, I was distracted. Um, so, you know, would 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 we approve a, whatever it is a twelve foot wall today on the property line of the aqueduct? Most likely not, but but it's 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 there. So everything that's being proposed, the 500 square feet addition for the bedroom, you, you're not going to be able to see it from the aqueduct, as far as I as far as I can tell from this. Correct. Um, so, so Judd, I think that's true, but yeah. you know there are a lot of houses on the aqueduct, okay, and I don't want them five years from now or five months from now saying, well, why can't I have 157 percent of FAR or coverage with my house on the aqueduct? Right, that's the thing that really concerns me. Yeah, I understand. Um, any other comments? I'll tell you what my instinct is. My instinct is we should adjourn this until next month. Make sure all board members have a chance to get out there and really get a good look at the site and see how it looks and how they feel about it from, from both sides, from the aqueduct side and the other side. Um, and you can think about whether you need quite such a large patio and maybe we can uh, make any cuts you can, maybe even the room, I don't know about that. I know 500 square feet is not a huge addition. But um, if we could get that number down and everybody could get to have a good look at the property and see how they really think it's going to affect. I think that we would have a better idea going forward whether we could approve this next month. Can I make one suggestion? Hey, Nick, yes. can you yep. bring up the rendering of the front? So that there is a current rendering with, and I believe that's the correct landscape. 
the changes that we're proposing is that one story addition mm -hmm. and parking lot over on the left side, mm -hmm. the rest of it you won't see. Nick, is there a rear? We have the rear, correct. There it is. So there's the staircase, there's the deck that comes off, and there's the new staircase tucked up against the building. Those are our changes. But from the front, <laughs> and I guess this go back. Is, you I, know, this. That's fine. Yeah, I mean, it, it, I got to tell you, it feels like it's crowding the property. And that's why I think it might benefit us to go take a look at it. And it's a big number. And look, that's part of, it's not just a number. There's a reason those numbers are established that the way they are and 157% over allowable is just an awful lot of coverage on property. So there's a significant more of them on the list that's with, that are with us. On that list that you gave us, yeah. Mm -hmm. And a lot of those are on, in neighborhoods with much smaller pieces of property, mm -hmm. um, with the Correct. houses much closest together. Yep, and that's exactly the point, is that we're a little larger. If we could have, I mean, look, this is, this is you, I respect you guys, whatever your you know, wishes are, your wishes are. But in an essential, I don't want to get stuck on the 157 number because it's a statistical math equation. And it's a little, I mean, you have to take each, we take each application individually and review each one individually. So if that's what you need to do, then that's what we need to do. We're looking to get moved along to um, facilitate personal need. So it is, a, it is a concern. Time is a little bit of a concern for us, but if we get adjourned, that's what happens. I mean, we can't do anything about it. Um, I don't know if there's more information we can give you, but you know this is where we are. Yeah, I would like to see some of that coverage come off uh, as much as you can. And I think that it really would benefit everybody, especially when looking where you're gonna put the generator to have one more look at the property sure. with that in mind. I am always hesitant to ask people to put, I believe me, I understand after doing this for over 10 years, it's a burden to ask people to kick it down the can, you know, the can down the road another month, but it's better than not getting approved tonight. <laughs> and it's I agree. Oh, I totally and agree. And it's better uh, than people not getting another look, given the fact that I didn't realize where the generator was gonna go. I think we need to take one more look at this. Sure. And I think if you could come back with a lower number and I can't make any promises, I don't know what any of the other board members think, mm -hmm. that would make a difference to me. So, um, so to help with this. Yep. Um, do you need me to potentially put some corner stakes out, locate some things, yep. meet that some people great. there? If you, I don't think we need to meet anybody there, but some, some stakes would be great. Sure. That I, would be I, great. Yeah, I, I just, I, I think that, I think that maybe if uh, somebody could actually sort of walk you through with renderings in hand and show you where everything lays out, I think that would be, might be very helpful. Mm -hmm. um, just so that you get a better idea, and maybe you know, maybe we can arrange uh, a site visit with all of you at, at, at you know at a time that's convenient uh, for you, so that we can kind of walk yeah. you through. Because I I do think it's important, and I and um, um, it, it's worth taking the time. Uh, yeah. It's worth us spending our time with you to make sure that uh, you can see all the details. Because um, I, I I think it will be worth it in the long run. Yeah. So could you maybe um, contact? the village office and set up sort of a time. We, we cannot all go together <laughs> because that counts as be meeting, which we're not allowed to do. Mm -hmm. But if we could maybe go in shifts on yeah. a Saturday morning or something like that, um, I think it would be helpful to get another look at this. Yeah, so I think that's a good idea. Procedurally, yeah. do we need to reapply? Nothing, no, no. It'll, you'll be on our agenda for next month. And you okay. don't need to re-notice it. 
Oh, we don't need to re note. No, it. no, no. Okay. Yeah, because that puts us on the number three, I think. No, this no, is a uh, this is zoning board. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then uh, I'm sorry, Sarah. You mentioned um, contacting the village office to schedule. Is, just is that to, just to let them know, like you know, that maybe you'll be available on a Saturday morning, oh, okay. sometime between now and then, and then we can come. Uh, we'll coordinate between ourselves, not all being there at the same time, but okay. we can, as much as possible, get everybody out there. Okay. As yeah. far as that goes, I, I would only I would only ask one favor. Yes. Everybody, everybody drive there and pull into the parking <laughs> and pull into the driveway. Okay. Right. Okay. All right. Great. That'll okay. be a good experiment. All right. Yes. Thank you. I know we took a lot of time on this, but I wanted to not uh, rush by it. There's a lot here, so right. thank, thank you. And thank we you appreciate all. your time. We appreciate everything, and uh, yeah, we'll be in contact with the village and we'll figure it out. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, next case is uh, Schle Schleifer on uh, Sycamore Lane. Hey there, everybody. How are you? Good, thank you. How are you? Yeah, good. Thanks for having me tonight. My name is Kristen Lux. I'm from Kristen Lux Architecture, and I'm here representing my clients, Buck and Rebecca Schleifer, owners of 120 Sycamore Lane. And I'd like to share my screen with you, if that sounds good. Before you do that, Warhol behind you, you, you know you can buy the original now. It's going to be auctioned off. I know. <laughs> Estimate of what? One and a quarter million dollars, I think, something like yeah, that. that yeah, that's, that's, that's well out of my budget. <laughs> this is going to have to suffice. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. No, no, not at all. I'm always happy to talk about art. Um, yes, so 120 Sycamore Lane. We are proposing a second story addition, or actually, excuse me, it's actually a third story addition because uh, the planning board let us know that we should be counting our basement as the first story, our existing main story as the second story, and our new third story addition of about 640 square feet. And it's going to house two bedrooms, a bathroom, and a linen closet. I am here to request three variances. The first, um, we are exceeded allowable coverage currently, so we have an existing non-conforming condition. The second, we also have an existing non-conforming FAR condition. And then the third, we're exceeding our allowable stories by going up to three stories. So I'm here to talk about those three things with you. Um, the first item is the allowable coverage. And you can see here that we have our site plan. The prior owners went ahead and put in these two patios without requesting permission. So both of these are illegal, unfortunately, and they push our coverage well over what is allowable. We're proposing to remove the patio on the upper left, which is currently a basketball court, and we would like to leave the patio and legalize it, which is this one here, just next to the house. So if we do that, um, the patio that we would like to legalize is 325 square feet. And when we add that to our existing coverage, which is already over allowable at 2,558 square feet, we add on our new patio that pushes us up, or actually, excuse me, our existing patio up to uh, 2,883 square feet. Um, allowable is 2,000, so you'll see we're a little bit above there. And I can show you. We also have this wonderful neighborhood map, much like our other people tonight presenting. And it gives you a view of the surrounding houses. This house here is our house, which is um, B on the map over here. Oh, excuse me, A on the map over here. Why don't I zoom in a little bit? And you'll see it down here, you can compare our existing and proposed coverage to uh, those of our neighbors. We are currently 127.7% over allowable 
and legalizing the existing patio adjacent to the house will put us up to 144% over allowable, um, which isn't too crazy compared to some of what's going on in the neighborhood. Should I, would you like to chat about that or should I move on to the second item? Uh, why don't you move on to the second item and then we can, we can circle back. Very good. Uh, second item, exceeding allowable FAR. So we're currently over at 103.7%. And the new addition of about 640 square feet, that pushes us up to over, uh, it's 126.5%. So 26% over allowable FAR. And again, this nice chart here shows you a good comparison of our house at the top comparing to others in the neighborhood. And then we go on to the next page. And you can also see from this other neighborhood map, I've gone ahead and I've singled out um, three other houses in the surrounding neighborhood, which have done basically the exact same addition. Their lot sizes are a tad bit bigger, but you can see uh, that the FAR is definitely over what is allowable. Let me zoom in on that for you. But Kristen, based on your own chart, right, you would go to the top of the list on FAR, yes? Let's see, let's just confirm that. 126, that's correct, yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. And coverage too, I think, right? I think that no, would be- there's No, there's one that's higher on coverage. Oh, you're right, there was Yeah, one. here, let me, I'll bump right. back yeah, to the one at 198.5. Yeah, 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 I saw that. Where, where is that house? Uh, the one that is- On Harriman. And then, hold on, let me, so that was the, we're, at, we're looking at FAR now, right? I'm sorry. Uh, I'm actually looking at coverage right You're now. You're looking at coverage. It's it's one that was higher than you, yeah, 198. Oh, yeah, that's actually the neighboring house. Okay. That's the same addition that we have. So that's, that's okay, yeah. That's yep, here. Yep. I know. That. And that's this guy here. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, 109, 109 Harriman is that one. Okay, I gotcha. Yeah, That's yeah, exactly. The most over. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I have a question, first of all, on coverage. Please. So the, your, your proposed addition doesn't add anything to coverage. Coverage relates just to legalizing the patios that were added by the prior owner, or at least legalize one of them, right? Exactly, yeah, that's correct. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, and then let me talk to you briefly about stories. So uh, <laughs> let me tell you a story. So uh, we're, our, our proposed story, uh, unfortunately, the Greenberg GIS system, it actually calls our house out as uh, one story. It does not count the basement as a story. So we're actually requesting a third story, even though the Greenberg GIS, it would be a second story. Uh, and that is because our basement ceiling is more than four feet above the exterior grade. So the small addition that we are doing, and I'm just going to show you that plan, it would actually be considered a third story because our basement stands so high above the ground. And I will show you. Let me get busy here. So here's our first floor plan. You can see uh, we're keeping our existing stair here. And then this is what we're proposing above. So it's just over the left-hand part of the house. And essentially, it's not even going to look like another floor. We're actually just changing the pitch of the roof. And then at the back of the house, we're adding a shed dormer so that we can get proper ceiling height for those two bedrooms. And I can show you what that will look like in elevation. So here is our existing exterior street elevation. And the new addition will be over this left part of the house. And here's the back. So again, this, is, this will be over the right part of the house. And here's our proposed front elevation. And you can see that the pitch of the roof has been raised and um, the slope has increased. And then here's the back of the house, the same higher pitch, and then a nice shed dormer to kind of tuck those two bedrooms into. Um, any comments or questions? 
so in terms of, and I'm sure you you have the, the correct, for why this counts, the basement counts as a first story, it's, is the basement the full sort of extent of the, the footprint or is it only over on the left side as you're facing the house? Yeah, so it's a weird condition. Let me pull up the, the basement plan and we can talk about it a little better that way. So. Yeah, my understanding is it's just how far above the ground it is, right? That it, yeah, at, at exactly. any point. At any point. Yeah, yeah it's, it's the, yeah. Yeah, so if the ceiling exceeds four feet above the lowest grade for a certain amount of space, it counts as a story. And you can see here's our basement plan. The left side, which is where we're building our addition above, is all garage with some storage space in the back. And then the right hand side, we've got a playroom in the back, unfinished basement in the front, and then we've got a little powder room and a storage room. Yep. <laughs> yeah. It's a funny thing. We've had this a few times before. It is funny. It's it, sometimes it's even only like half a floor, but it's counted as a floor. Yeah. Yeah. And I think the sloping earth too. We have yeah. um, a yep. big, big uh, difference in. Right. Sorry, but it's full to the elevation. Yeah. Yeah. You can see we have a big difference in grade. It drops down right. with the garage doors. And then at the right side of the house, it raises up. Yep. Any other questions? Uh, it's judge just to go back and clarify that on coverage you're removing the 230 square feet of the basketball hoop patio you're legalizing the 325 the existing patio i think it's like three three and a quarter yes that's correct and, and that's it with coverage yeah that's all okay 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 any other questions um is the uh, is the is the actual highest part of the roof higher when you're done or is it within the existing the just, existing peak of the new roof is higher than it is currently but it does fall within legal building height and i believe it calls that out here let me yeah so here we go we've got maximum building height Existing is 25 foot eight, and it's going to go up to 30 feet at the highest point. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, the kid's gym, is that a structure? The kid's gym, that's like a swing set. Right, so a structure. Uh, yeah, yeah, it, yes. If you want to call it a structure, yeah, somebody built but, it. Well, they, like, I don't want to call it a structure, but the building department usually wants to call it a structure. <laughs> Right, well, so they, it, that's, is that it's counted? funny that you said that. They didn't call it out at all. And it, it did it's not. just a swing set. Yeah, it wasn't an issue with them, but I'm happy to ask them about it if you like. I think I think it's better to not. Yeah. <laughs> I do I do too. I definitely do too. However, I want you to, I want happy. you to be happy. <laughs> so all if you would like me to, I will. It sounds like Ed's been out there and he didn't think it was flag it. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So it is what it I want to there. Right. Um, it's on the map, so it, it must have been there when he was there. Mm -hmm. right. uh, can I just see the, that chart again that you first showed us? Because I have to tell you, the stories don't bother. It, it doesn't bother me that, you know, you need an extra story because mm -hmm. you say you're within buildable height. And that doesn't seem to be a huge concern. The coverage in the FAR are sort of on the high end. And I mm -hmm. think um right but so Tara, the coverage is is really legitimizing the existing coverage right exactly exactly right. yeah right in and fact we are actually she's reducing making, what's she's there the patio out she's small she's making right. the coverage smaller right yeah. right okay fair enough absolutely right. um the far would be would be the highest in the, that neighborhood yeah right um, can I can I just say, based on what I saw on the Greenberg property cards and what the planning department told me, those things were not the same thing. And like the other people that presented before me, of course, I've taken all of this information from the town of Greenberg GIS system. I would say everyone should take that with a grain of salt because I don't know that it's 100% accurate. I hear what you're saying. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
any other comments from anybody on the board? And uh, I, I don't suppose there's anybody who wants to be heard on this. I don't see any hands raised, but if there is, you can pipe in, Sarah, and let me know. Um, uh, yeah. I'm gonna make- Nobody's raising their hand. Nobody's raising their hand. Okay, great. Um, I am going to make a motion to approve. As I said before, I don't, the stories don't bother me. That's something that we've dealt with before. It's sort of a, a quirk of our zoning laws, but that doesn't, the garage doesn't strike me as a full story. And as long as you're within buildable height, uh, that doesn't trouble me too much. Uh, you are reducing the coverage, although the coverage is a little bit high for this neighborhood. Um, you are reducing and you're really just legalizing what's existing, nothing's being added. Um, the FAR, as I noted before, it does make you high, but given the design, I don't think it's overly intrusive and I think it does fit in with the neighborhood. Having seen the other houses up and down that street and therefore I just, it's not as troubling. It's a little higher than we like to go, but it's sort of on that line as far as I'm concerned. So I will make a motion to approve, but do I have a second? A second. Right. Okay, so we'll go from uh, bottom to top on my screen. John Dimling? Yes. Judd? Yes. Rosie? Yes. Charlie? Yes. And I'm a yes, so you are approved, and I will send you out a letter uh, at the end of the week. Thank you so much. It's nice Thank to chat you. with all of you. I hope you have a good night. You too. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so Lark is our next case. <clears throat> John Malone, how are you? Hi, everybody. John Malone, first Malone Architecture, representing the Larks. Um, let me pull up a Share, hold on a sec. Um, that's not what I'll do that. Um, so we're in front of you today for two variances, uh, one for coverage and one for pool location. Uh, the project includes both an addition and a patio. It says deck, but it's actually a patio, and um, and uh, a swimming pool. The uh, quickly just to understand the, the project, um, the existing uh, the existing house is a contemporary from the uh, late '80s, early '90s. Uh, the the goal is to uh, change the style of the house to a, a more classical uh, house and also to fix some of the deficits of the current house uh, quickly to go to the existing uh, plans. The house on the first level has a very small uh, existing kitchen relative to the size of the house. There's a dining room extension that um, is failing. There was footings that were too small when it was designed, so that needs to be replaced. And there's some double height space uh, in this area that makes the breakfast area kind of offer relative to the kitchen. So the goal was to expand the kitchen, uh, add a mudroom. And also there's a garage that's a, the width of the garage accommodates like one and a quarter cars, even though it looks like it should accommodate more. So those were sort of the first floor deficits. On the second floor, uh, you'll notice the primary bedroom suite has no walk-in closets and a very awkward uh, bathroom. Uh, and you know, this again is the awkward uh, open to blow space, like with a catwalk across it and areas that are unutilized. And then it has a single shared bathroom for the three uh, bedrooms uh, with the washer and dryer inside the bedroom. 
So the goal of the renovation is to correct some of those deficits. Again, quickly, this is the contemporary design of the existing house. If you guys haven't seen it, we also have some images if you'd like to see that. Uh, so the, the new house for the proposed uh, revision puts in a, a more typical uh, suburban kitchen, uh, wedges a, a mudroom in here between the garage and the kitchen area. Um, makes a change to the pattern location so that the stair could be a more traditional stair. Um, and then the, the size of the rooms uh, hasn't really grown in that it's really just correcting those, those deficits. There's some storage and pantry stuff that actually it was a higher priority than increasing the size of the rooms. And then on the second level, there's a master or a primary bedroom with um, better uh, closet space and a more functional bathroom. And then there is a one of the three bedrooms has an ensuite bath so that it could operate as a guest room or you know think about it. And there's a shared bath that's been added. And then also the the space has been part of what was driving this is the need for work at home space. So there's a small office and some thought into how you might work on the, on the lower levels. So both both um, adults have home office areas. Um, and then the elevation of what we're looking for. So from the front of the house, which faces north, is a much uh, more traditional classical design. Um, and then side elevations are kind of resultant. And then in the rear of the house also, uh, sort of a more uh, traditional classical design. Uh, the dining room is sort of a sunroom type language. And there's a, a balcony cover for the patio that's shown there. Uh, in terms of the variances that we're looking for, one is a variance that we're often in front of you for when, it, when reviewing swimming pools. So the, um, the proposed, wait, 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 I'm sorry, this is, the proposed swimming pool is located in what's effectively the rear yard of the house. However, the house, the, the lots go through uh, from Beachwood through to Osceola. And so the lot effectively has two fronts. So the, um, the, pool, is in, um, the pool is in the rear yard, but there, there is no way that it can be in both uh, rear yard and front yard. So that's, that's a typical uh, thing we're asking for. In terms of the expansion to the house, you can see here, this is the limit of the proposed expansions, these two areas here. In terms of their footprint. Uh, in terms of FAR, we're below allowable FAR, we're below uh, height restrictions and everything. So again, the only uh, thing we're asking for is building coverage. So we've provided a chart uh, where we focused on the building coverage uh, of the properties that we looked at, and this is the neighborhood. We tried to keep a, a relatively consistent neighborhood all within the same zone. Uh, we have 26 properties and I think uh, 15 of them are over the allowable. Um, I think less than that, about eight of them are in above uh, the range that we are looking for. Some are significantly above that range with an average closer to the range we're looking for. So right now the property in terms of coverage is at 94% of allowable and we're asking to go to 124. So again, the allowed Coverage is um, 326, I mean, I'm sorry, 3216, and we're about 800 uh, square feet above that, just under 800 square feet above that. The, uh, the coverage, again, the coverage overage is almost entirely associated with the pool and the wall, and the hot tub pool and wall piece. So the impact of that. You know, all of this, all of that work is flat on the ground. So there's no volume associated with any of that work. Uh, the pool is proposed to be screened from the neighbors and from Osceola. So we have um, shown in the site plan, solid fences on either side of the property here, which provides screening to the neighbor's yards and then a very dense uh, planting addition to the rear yard, which is already uh, a tree environment. 
you look quickly at the uh, aerial of what's happened there. So that's, this is the property and you can see that on the Osceola side, there's already one village on that side. Um, so I think, uh, you know, that might be, um, you know, civil, I don't think you guys need to look at it, but basically there has been a, a, a detailed civil design that any um, negative impact that's associated with the impervious surface of, of the pool has been addressed with stormwater, so the pool will not cause any runoff or any other environmental impacts, and it'll be fully screened from the patio. And we believe that the uh, requested amount is uh, similar to the neighborhood and we shouldn't have any negative impacts on the neighborhood. Any questions for John? John, yes. is, there, is, is there a fence? Yes, there is. There's a fence, Charlie, on both. There's a right. solid fence um, on each property line here. Right. And it stops here. And then when it goes from O's to X's, it goes to an open fence. So this is a solid wood fence. We have details for both. Right. OK. And the fence like, uh, is six solid feet wood fence yeah. right. uh, on the side yards. And then in the rear yard, there's an open fence so that planting will move through it. And it has, you know, it, it's not really the same requirement for screening at the rear yard. OK. And in, in that diagram, can you show, in addition to the pool, what are the new areas of coverage? So uh, the new areas of coverage are this, well, in this area right now, Rosemary, there's a patio in right. this recessed portion, and that extends out here. And that's about 400, I think, no, it's about 240 square feet. So that patio uh, is being taken out, and the patio is being relocated about the same size here. So the new the new coverage area is is this area here, and this the new building cover like it's all building coverage, but the new part that is building is this area here, this little this few square feet, and then this area over here. And the patio is not there, so in other words, you're relocating the patio. Yeah, it's new. It's a new patio. It's a new patio, sir. It's just it's just right. This is flat on the ground, and then the pool is flat on the ground. Okay. Any other comments? Oh, quickly, there's a few other items. There is a generator pad shown here, a window well that's associated with, you know, making the egress in the basement, and a few other uh, AC pads that are new. Anybody else have any questions or comments for John? Uh, uh, could you go back to the table on, on coverage? Yeah, that's what I wanted to see as well. Of neighborhood coverage, um, John? Or yes. The, Could you, is there a way to enlarge that a little bit so I can read it? <laughs> Here, I can scroll down if you want me to keep going. Just let me know. Thank you. So it looks like. The, the 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 proposed is well above the median in terms of the overage. Especially you compare the IF twenties to the IF twenties. It's uh, if you take out those IF forties, um, then you're on the high end. But there's one there's one that's higher at 152, but everything else looks to be either under or pretty close to the line. Am I wrong about that? Yes, I, no, you're right. I think that that's why I want to look at it. Yeah, we can look at specific properties if there's ones that, you know, we do have, right. I mean, I think the neighborhood is relatively consistent. Let's see, where are the higher forty? Oh, the other side of Osceola is the higher forty. Yeah, yeah. 
So that neighborhood is a little less consistent, I think. Yeah. Right, you know, because you have some smaller. Right, right, right. But you know, I think, yeah, it's a little less consistent. So I know there's something that's like 230, and I'm sure that's probably the Yeah, same that's the IF40. Yeah. 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 Well, I'm trying to see what's that? Um, where's property D? Let me take a look. That's yeah. right here. Okay. Do any of those other houses on Beechwood have pools? They do. And again, you know, it's hard for us to accurately determine coverage associated with pools um, because we don't we don't have surveys of those properties. Right. So, you know, I think we try to be conservative to not, you know, lie about those. But I, I think those are probably like if you look at this layout here or this layout here compared to what we're proposing to do, I think those are probably, let's see what they actually show on the EMT. Yeah, V, v is shown as under and T is shown as pretty much at, you know, 102. I, you know, I think, again, we try to be accurate, but we, we err on the side of being conservative, meaning, um, not make up what we don't have information on. So um, I have a feeling those are probably more are closer to what what we're actually showing here. Because if you see the coverage related with the home and the coverage of this pool is almost as large as the home, <laughs> right. you see it on the aerial. So I think it must be uh, higher. Right. So, but uh, in your own calculations, though, right? This you have swimming pool and hot tub and pool equipment pad, there was a add up to 100, 858 square feet, right? Right, right, right. Okay. And that's really the change, right? You're going from 3,096 to 3,996. It's all about the pool. It's really, yes, it's really, the impact is really the pool, right? Right, and, the, and as you pointed out, the pool has no volume above ground, right? And it's screened. Right. Right, okay. Any other questions or comments for John and I'm assuming as I said it doesn't look like anybody is raising their hands so interrupt me if I'm wrong but otherwise I'm assuming there's no comments from the public um all right so I'm I'm gonna make a motion uh sir um, before, that, before you do that John John <laughs> it's Sean Demlin can I ask you a question absolutely uh, help help give me a uh, some way to distinguish what you're asking for here from somebody else coming in and, uh, you know, with, with, the, with the same sort of thing. I don't want to, as the, my fellow board members know, I'm concerned about precedent and I want to have some reason to distinguish this from somebody else on that same street or five other people on that same street coming in and wanting to, to build a, a pool. Well, I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure we could separate that from you know the the distinguishing. I mean, in the, that question is mostly about what distinguishes this property from other properties. I think you know it's a flat, a relatively flat property. Uh, in terms of the variance request for the rear yard, I mean for the pool location because yeah. the property has two front. That's a special condition with a property with two front yards. Right. I don't think the property really has any other special condition. I think what I would say is that we, the location of the house, the size of the rear yard and the relationship to the other houses is such that we can limit any impacts of the proposed, um, you know, we can mitigate uh, impacts associated with the request. So there might be other properties in the neighborhood where it would be harder to screen the pool or that the request may be related to something that isn't flat on the ground, like a pool house yeah, or a shed yeah. or something like that. But there's yeah. no other really distinguishing. The, the screening seems helpful from my perspective. Right. I, but John, if we vote, you know, I'm looking at John Malone's math. I'm talking to John Dimling. If we vote no. yes on this, then properties B, C, D, and E would have, you know, presumptively Valley claims to say, hey, they did it. How come I can't do it? Like, I think, I think you have to vote with that mindset. Like these properties are almost identical. They're on Beechwood, they back up onto Osceola. The lots are almost the same size, 
right? The house is maybe a little closer to the front of, you know, the, maybe a little closer to Beechwood or Osceola, but essentially they're all the same. I, I appreciate that, Charlie. I was, I was hoping to come up with something that yeah, created what, you, what you just said, and it's hard to, hard to do. Right, it's hard to say why this one and none of these. Right? Yeah. Right. Can I can I see that uh, coverage chart again, John? I, I think you know there there is. Uh, I know you guys have consistent concern about precedent, but actually the the criteria from the state level and the code has more to do with um, impacts, right? And whether those impacts can be mitigated and whether the benefit uh, outweighs any negative impact. So. You know, part of the reason we have this in front of you is we can't really identify uh, negative environmental impacts to the neighbors, and that's that's different. I'm sorry, so I'm running a little more. Yeah. No, uh, I think we're we're asking the the board to judge this not based on on precedent as much as you know we're asking for the relief because we believe what we put in front of you doesn't have any negative impacts to adjacent properties or to the neighborhood. No. What somebody might that, do. I'm, I'm getting old, John. Could you just make that chart a little bit? Oh, better? Jesus! Yeah, you know, <laughs> <can do> that. <laughs> I can't even. I couldn't even read it on my own screen. I don't know why I looked at that. I mean, yeah. I, I would just say, um, Charlie, I disagree a little bit on B, C, and D because they're all already over on, um, and and this property is under. And if they wanted to come here and add thirty percent. I would say that actually B, C, and D would absolutely be a no. I mean, that would just be oh, too so high on those numbers. Sarah, that's a good point. But if they wanted to add a smaller pool and- Right, like, right, 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 right. 124%, right. right? I, I wasn't specifying the same kind of pool, but I, if they wanted a pool because their neighbors have a pool, it would be hard to say, well, you can't have one. Right, depending on how big a pool they want. Exactly. Right, 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 right. yeah. No, 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 I agree with that. I would just distinguish it that- Yep. You know, um, those numbers are, are a good bit higher and yep. therefore gives them a lot less to work with. Yeah, point taken. Yep. Yeah. Um, any other comments or questions? Okay, I'm, I'm going to make a motion to approve. Um, I think this is borderline because I think you are adding quite a bit of coverage, but it's I think just the amount that I would be comfortable with going up to, um, it's knocking on the door for sure. Um, in terms of the placement of the pool, I mean, I think that's just the nature of having two streets on either side of your property. So I'm not as troubled. It seems to me you're placing it in the backyard and, and that's what it's all about. Um, so I'll make a motion to approve if someone will second it. I'll second it, Judd. Great, thanks, Judd. Okay, so top to bottom, Charlie. I vote yes. Rosie? Yes. Judd? Yes. John? Yes. Okay, you are approved and I'll send you out a letter at the end of the week. Thanks very much, guys. Have a good night. Thank you. Uh, okay, the last matter is Pasco, I believe it is. Yep, 10 Hancock Place. Don, are you recused from this one too? No, I don't think so. I've no. not gotten anything. All right, okay. By, by the way, interesting, mm -hmm. though, I, I got a, uh, you know, the, the certified mail, but the mailman, uh, we never signed for it. The mailman just tore it off and signed his own name and took it back to <laughs> When I asked him about that, he claimed that he's allowed to do that. You <laughs> don't. He said, well, in, in the alternative, since you weren't home, I, I would have left something so you would have had to come to the post office to, to sign it. So I thought I was doing you a favor. Oh, there you go. <laughs> he was. All right. Hello. How are you? Good evening. How are you guys doing? Good. Um, yeah, so this, uh, this application was before you last year and was approved. And this is just a minor update to a previous approval. Um, okay. If I can share my screen right now, I'll get through it. I'm sorry, uh, just I'm taking the minutes. What, what is your name? 
Uh, James Crap from Studio Park for James the owner, Crapp, Richard Kaplan. Sorry for the lack of introduction. <laughs> I'm Judd Harsher. <laughs> nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Um, so uh, previously last year, you approved a variance for uh, additional site coverage uh, for an added pool at 10 Hancock Place. Uh, subsequently, everything was approved. We started construction and we realized due to field conditions that our equipment pad was slightly undersized uh, where we had previously approved it. So what we've done is propose a new location with a slightly larger equipment pad and we're requesting relief of our previous variance for an additional 33 square feet. It's very, very minimal. So just to give you frame of reference. So this is what was approved, or I'm gonna show you. This is what was approved um, uh, last year. Essentially an equipment pad in this area here. There's a fence in this portion. I'll show you on the diagram or the more detailed portion. There's an existing fence here. Our equipment pad had to be enlarged. It was up against the pool. We were up against the buffer. So we needed to move the pool equipment. So subsequently what we did was we proposed moving the equipment to the other side of the lot, which is now presently over here when it used to be here. So. Essentially, nothing is within the buffer. Uh, everything is screened as per the request of the local uh, landscape architect. And we're just really requesting an extra uh, approval of 33 square feet against the existing variance that we already had approved last year. That's the- so it's, it's just a coverage variance. Correct. So we, we were approved in that variance last year, but we just, we had to up it a little bit to accommodate our equipment pad. And that's just out of necessity because of the you just, partially due to partially due to the equipment that was selected that we hadn't finalized when we started and it was just slightly undersized in general so the pad just became bigger any questions comments okay so i will make a motion um Seems fairly straightforward to me. Everything else has been approved. It's just making a slightly bigger pad for to accommodate the necessary equipment. So I'll make a motion to approve. Do I have a second? I'll second. Super, thank you. Okay, so bottom to top, John Dimling. Yes. Judd? Yes. Rosie? Yes. Charlie? Yes. All righty, you are approved. I, I vote yes, and I will send you a letter at the end of the week. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Have a good evening, guys. Thank you. Thanks. Well, Thanks. thank you, you everybody. That was uh, that was longer than I expected. That uh, one of those matters took quite a while, and I guess we'll see them <laughs> too. <laughs> but hopefully, we'll have a, a good look at it before then and see what we think. So thank All right. you. All right. Have a good have a good night, All everybody. Right. Thank so you. on just one question yeah. on that matter. So are we expecting that will we get some kind of a notification about yeah, when? I'll, I'll touch base with Sarah Palermo. Uh, uh, I'll just tell them to let us know basically when they have it marked out. Um, and if they want to tr try to coordinate, you know, a time where they give us a time and we could stop by and talk to them. Uh, I'll let you all know about that. We'll just make sure we're not all there at the same time. And, uh, and the reason for that is because otherwise it's a meeting. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. So what's critical mass? Like can yeah. this be there, but not three? Right. Yes, exactly. Yes. Right. Okay. Right. Not, yeah. not a quorum, I guess. Right. <laughs> right. Not a quorum. That's where I was going. And, um, <laughs> if you can't make it that particular time, I'll just make sure they keep it marked out for a few days and you can stop by whenever. But I'll, yeah. I'll be in touch about that. All right, yeah, it is a it is a funny little property. I'd gone gone down in yeah, and looked it at is. from the aqueduct too. And I'm not yeah. sure what I think about it exactly with some of the new details today. So I'd I'd like yeah. to see them. Definitely. All right. Have a good night, everybody. Thanks, everybody. Thanks. Good night. Good night. Bye. Bye.